Hi, would you like to learn how to talk about different types of friends in English? Welcome to Jen's Jugyo. My name is Jen and today I'm going to teach you eight collocations connected to friends. Before we begin, let's quickly review what a collocation is. A collocation is a set of words in English that have a unique meaning. However, if you change any of the words in the set, it will sound strange to native speakers. The eight collocations in today's lesson are all connected to friendship. Our first collocation for today, and the collocation that students make the biggest mistake with is make a friend. Make new friends. In English, we don't say find a new friend or get a new friend or whatever other verbs people try to use. The correct collocation is make friends. Make new friends. When you first move to a new city, it can be difficult to make friends at first. Our second collocation for today is mutual friend. You can have a mutual friend with somebody. What this means is that you and this other person have met and you suddenly discover that both of you have the same friend. So this person is a mutual friend. They're a friend of your friend. One of my friends met her husband through a mutual friend. Collocation number three is a step before friends. It is acquaintances. And the collocation for this is casual acquaintance. A casual acquaintance means somebody who you know. Maybe you see them at work. They could be your coworker or you go to the same school. They could be in your class and you know this person, you're familiar with them, but you're not actually close enough that you consider each other to be friends. So they are an acquaintance or a casual acquaintance. Collocation number four is childhood friend. Here are some pictures of me with my childhood friends. A childhood friend is a friend that you have known since you were both children, since you were both kids. But we don't say children friend or kid friend. The exact collocation is childhood friend. Several years ago, I got to go to my childhood friend's wedding. Friend collocation five is close friends or good friends. Some people say that close friends are better than good friends. Some people consider them equal. I think they're basically the same. A close friend or a good friend is a friendship that goes deeper than just hanging out with each other. A close friend or a good friend is someone who you can truly rely on. You can count on them or depend on them if you need something. You can share your innermost feelings with that person. Collocation number six is circle of friends. Your circle of friends is a group of people who you will regularly go out together with and spend time together with as a group. So the people who are in your circle of friends are usually semi-close or close friends that you will enjoy spending time together with in a group setting. When I was in high school, there was a group of girls that I was a part of and we had a really tight circle of friends. We would do many, many things together all the time. Collocation number seven is a platonic friend or a platonic friendship. What this means is that someone is friends with a member of usually the opposite sex, but it is not a romantic relationship. It is purely a friendship based relationship. I am married, but I have several male friends. I'm not romantically interested in my male friends. They are platonic friends. No romantic feelings. Platonic friends. Collocation number eight is your best friend. This is where the expression BFF comes from. Your best friend forever. 
Your best friend or best friends are the friends in your life who are the closest to you. The people who you love to spend time with the most, who you will share everything with. For example, in Canada, Liz is my best friend. We have been there for each other through many ups and downs. We went to each other's weddings and we've been a part of each other's lives for many years now. She is my best friend. I mentioned that Liz and I have been friends for a long time. I would not use the expression a long-term relationship to describe our friendship. I could say we are lifelong friends, that's okay, or that she's my BFF, that's okay. But the specific expression that some students get confused is long-term relationship. This expression is connected only to romantic relationships. So if you're dating someone and you've been dating them for a year or two, you're in a long-term relationship. If you're married like me, it is a long-term relationship. You and your spouse are in a long-term committed relationship. So committed relationship is not for friendships, it's for romantic relationships. But hopefully your spouse or romantic partner is also one of your best friends. Connected to friendships, one really common question that I get from many people is how can I make English speaking friends? The answer to this is how would you make any friends? Either you have something in common, such as the same workplace, job, or same school and classes, or same church or religious organization you attend, or you both like photography, you both like skiing, you both like some kind of interest or hobby that is the same. So joining in activities that you're interested in will help you to make new friends. If you're unable to physically meet people, you can still apply the same idea online by joining online forums and discussion groups with people who have similar interests and hobbies as you. Begin talking to them in the chat and slowly you will build a friendship with them. You could also look for language exchange opportunities where you find someone who wants to learn your language, who speaks English, and you want to learn English so you can become friends together and enjoy participating in language exchanges with each other. Today, you have learned eight collocations connected to friends, as well as some tips for how to make English speaking friends. And now it's time for question of the day. Today's question is, what advice would you give to people who want to make new friends? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this lesson. If you found it useful, please subscribe to Jen Studio and give this video a thumbs up. Good luck with your English studies. See you in the next lesson.